I think I was 29 when I listened to a book called Boundaries by John Townsend. And that was the first time when it clicked in what boundaries are. Before that, I didn't have a definition. I didn't have the concept. I definitely didn't have the muscle memory of what healthy relationships and respect and safety feels like in an attachment. I grew up in quite an enmeshed codependent household with a person who showed narcissistic tendencies and it was just water for my fish to be in this chaotic, non-defined relationship with another person where all your thoughts and feelings and most of your behaviors are just these murky territories of the same or similar entity of two people trying to live together and navigate life together. There isn't a sense of healthy self developing in people who in early childhood have experienced boundary violation. And it all starts in early childhood. That's what we model, that's what we inhale and adopt, and that's what later shows up in our intimate relationships. I've mentioned this before that any form of addictive behavior would be a failed attempt at establishing intimacy. And I definitely had issues with establishing and maintaining intimate relationships because that was my nervous system baseline that it's okay to exist in this chaotic mush of an entity with another person where your thoughts and feelings and most of your behaviors are this weird shared middle ground between two people's codependent existence. So the lack of a solid, strong, accountable, reliable sense of self is the cause of any form of um, uh, boundary issues or boundary violation issues that you impact on other people's later on in life or that you would feel from other people later on. But again, I didn't even have the definition for it. I didn't even understand what boundaries are. So I just wanted to go through a few quite arbitrary but quite useful categories for different types of boundary violations so that you would start having a sense of where it's okay and where it's not okay to interact with people. And the four Fs, fly, fight, flight, fawn, freeze, would be a normal nervous system adaptation, a um, survival mechanism, any form of, of those four, for counteracting the feeling of being violated. But I found one overarching theme that would come up with any person who has experienced boundary violation in early childhood, no matter how they act out later on and how they try to defend themselves, no matter how they try to cope and survive. There is this underlying sense of hiding in people who felt like that giving and taking was way too much for them who felt like that love is transactional, it's something that they have to earn, and their sense of self have somehow been violated. So hiding can come across as physical hiding. I had issues at work where I would literally have to shut myself into a toilet cubicle and wouldn't dare to go out and interact with people. I was just in a, a nervous system freeze response where I couldn't cope, I couldn't handle, it was way too much. I felt insecure, I felt unsafe, I felt like I'm not capable, I felt too small. Or um, if it's not a physical hiding, then it can be a sense of constant anxiety. You might have trouble sleeping because it's just constantly some kind of worrying, anxious thoughts are constantly going on in your mind or you're actively shying away from social interactions or speaking up or public speaking or um, a hiding of property or a hiding of an extended self would be another way of hiding your thoughts, hiding your feelings, hiding your physical, literal property, hiding your things from other people, keeping secrets and being quite 
jealous of those those boundaries being quite strict with your boundaries um a um a different subtlety in hiding would be a version of emotional hiding where you would act out and lash out you would adopt a a quite um vigilant persona of attacking when you feel attacked so instead of actively physically hiding away from people you would lash out on other people because you're trying to hide your true emotions your anger your sadness your fear that's another flavor of that and i gotta be honest you have to be very careful when you talk about boundary violation because you can take that to an extreme with the um um the the new agey snowflakey woke culture that would take anything and everything as boundary violation that's why we have the cancel culture and um, it is an incredibly fine line where it's appropriate or inappropriate to say something or do something and we can take it to an extreme when people's feelings get hurt and how much do we want to lean into it and how much do we want to make each other feel comfortable at all times so i'm going to keep this at the level of childhood experiences and i'm going to mention a couple of adult versions of these boundary violations where some of some of these categories are more age appropriate for adult relationships some of these don't apply that much to children but the baseline is that if you experience issues in being able to establish and maintain healthy, securely attached, well-adjusted, safe, supportive, intimate relationships, then it's worth looking into your childhood experiences and your imprints around feeling violated, even if there isn't any outright form of abuse or isn't any severe neglect or isn't any severe trauma in your past something might have registered for your nervous system as you felt your boundaries were crossed and your sense of self was crushed or attacked in some way that is later on causing you issues with being able to give and being able to receive if there is a sense of um, you feel exhausted when someone is asking you to do something or you feel like you're losing something when you have to give you feel like you don't have enough you're not well resourced enough to give from but someone's attempt at asking you for a favor asking you for help or just asking you for intimacy asking you for a connection asking you for your opinion asking you for your input if that feels like it's too much it's taken away you're not capable then all sorts of all those, those nervous system responses are pretty much a clear cut sign that at some point it, your mind and your physicality locked into the sense that I am not safe being me and being here. Clear cut boundary violation. And later on in life, the body can adapt in ways that it starts to develop self attacking diseases and conditions whether that's physical mental emotional my good friend georgie shout out to georgie she ingrained it in my brain that depression is a form of the psyche attacking itself any form of autoimmune disease or forms of cancer would be a very physical manifestation of the body breaking itself down and attacking itself because if your baseline is that you're not safe being you and the body's adaptive response would be to destroy the self so let's go through a couple of categories and i'm going to add a i'm, I'm always going to list childhood versions of these and i'm going to flavor it with a couple of my personal experiences because through a 20-year history I have had instances of each and every one of these categories. Lovely. 